2017 CF 15684, State v. Nelson, back from our recess. Ms. Hicks, is the state ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Mr. Lahr, defense? Yes, sir. Mr. Nelson, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's bring in the jury, please. Ms. Hicks, does the state acknowledge the jury? Yes, sir. Mr. Lahr, defense? Yes, sir. Mr. Nelson? Yes, sir. Ms. Hicks, please call the next witness for the state. Thank you. The state calls Reed Berman. Thank you. Judge, while Mr. Berman is coming into the courtroom, I can just put on the record that I'm using numerous photographs that have all already been previously shown to defense counsel and the defendant just while we were on our break. So they don't have to review them during the testimony. Who's handling uh, cross for the defense? I am. Testimony here about the give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Thank you, God. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Reporter. It's Reed Berman, R E I D B E R M A N. Thank you, Ms. Hicks. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, how are you employed? <coughs> uh, I own a real estate company. Okay. And where do you live? In Winter Park, 175 East Webster uh, Avenue. And had, were you living in that same address back in September of 2017? Yes, I was. And is that house here in Orange County, Florida? Yes, it is. I want to start out by showing you some photographs. Judge, may I approach? Yes. Yes, I do. And do these photographs fairly and accurately show what your home looked like back on September 27th of 2017? Yes. Judge, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification as states exhibits D, D, and C into evidence. Okay. All right, without objection, what's been marked for identification as states D is admitted into evidence as states exhibit 1. What's been marked for identification as state... Yes. States E is admitted in evidence as States Exhibit 2. States C is admitted in evidence as States Exhibit 3. Permission to publish, Your Honor? Once that's been marked by the clerk, yes. Thank you. I'm going to show, and it'll be on the screen behind you, what is now going to enter into evidence as States Exhibit 3. Actually, a Google Earth image of your home there in Winter Park, correct? Yes. What's across the street from your house? That's a golf course. Okay. What golf course is it? It's the Winter Park uh, Public Golf Course. Okay. And State's <coughs> Exhibit 1. Another picture of your house, just from a different angle, another Google Earth picture, right? Yes. And then finally, State's Exhibit number two. Is this the front entryway to your home? Yes, it is. And is that the front door there that we can see? Yes. Tell us what your cell phone number was back on September 27th of 2017. Uh, it's, it was 407-620-7150. Okay. And what was your name? Jennifer Fulford. Did you know a woman named Jennifer Fulford? Yes, I did. How did you know her? She um, worked for me. She was our nanny and house manager. 
How long had she worked for you prior to September of 2017? Um, approximately seven years. When did she start working for you? Uh, it was, this, it was um, the summer of 2011, I believe. Okay. What were her job responsibilities? You mentioned she was a house manager, a nanny. What kind of things did she do for you? Uh, she would she would come early in the morning uh, and get the kids, my children, ready for school, uh, cook them breakfast, drive them to school. Uh, she would come back and work at the house, do projects. Um, she also uh, was, she cleaned the house, picked up the kids from school, and... Now, how many kids do you have? Two. And how old are they now? They're 20 and 12. Okay. So your, your 20 year old back in 2017, had she already graduated from high school and gone off to college? Yes. All right. So by September of 2017, with respect to her nannying obligations, was she basically just nannying for your younger child? She did everything. I mean, she, she, she spent a lot of time with my younger child, but she also helped my older, older daughter with, with homework and other things. Okay. Um, and what is your younger child's name? Oliver. <clears throat> okay. So on the morning of September 27th of 2017, was Jennifer due to come to your house and work that day? Yes. And did she show up? Yes. Do you know about what time she got to your house? It was a little bit before seven. Did she have a key to your house? Yes. And would she normally let herself in and come in and get to work? Yes. Now at that time, were both of your children there or just your younger son? Just Oliver. Okay. Your daughter was off at school? Yes. All right. Now. You said she got there a little before seven o'clock. What was her first sort of thing that she had to take care of that morning when she first got to your house? Um, she would always go in to, to uh, wake up Oliver and make sure he started getting ready for school. Okay, where did your son attend school? Lake Highland. And so to your knowledge, is that what happened? She go get Oliver that morning, get him ready? Yes. Okay. Now at some point, she and Oliver left the house. Correct. Do you recall if you saw them before they left the house for her to take him to school? Um, he would usually, uh, after breakfast or when he finished getting ready, he would come in my room and, and give me a hug goodbye. Okay. And so Jennifer was the one who took him to school that day? Yes. After Jennifer dropped him off at school, did she come back to your house? Yes. And did you see her before you left for work? Yes. What time about did you leave for work that morning? It was around a quarter till nine, because I had a nine o'clock breakfast appointment. Okay. And were you aware if Jennifer had any appointments that day? Yes, she was, uh, she told me she was going to the, the dentist for, um, for an appointment. Okay. Do you know if she had any other appointments related to the care of your home? She was scheduling, um, there were, I had a piece of art that was being framed and they were, she had scheduled them to come to the house um, to deliver the art. Okay. And would that be an example of the kind of thing that she took care of and you kind of really weren't a big part of? Yes. Okay. Now, after you left for work that morning, did you ever see Jennifer Fulford again? I did not. Did you ever hear from her again? In any, and by hear from her, any of the methods of communication we use these days, phone, text, she, email? She had texted me um, sometime in the morning. And the morning. what was the text about? Um, she would remind me every, the 27th of every month that I owed so child support. Okay. Just she was for, reminding you to pay your child support? Yes. Another one of the things that she helped you out with? Correct. All right. Other than that text message, did you ever hear from Jennifer Fulford again? I did not. Now, 
During the school day, during that, while well, Oliver was at school that day on the 27th, particularly in the morning before, you know, around maybe 1130 or so, did you as Oliver's parent ever learn of him having any difficulties at school? No. Any emergencies involving Oliver in the morning? No. When was the first time that you had any sort of inkling that something might be amiss with Jennifer? Uh, I, had, I had a meeting that afternoon and I walked out of the meeting around four o'clock and I had received, uh, I believe a text from Oliver's mom um, uh, asking who was picking up Oliver because he, because he was in aftercare and he, he was never scheduled for aftercare. It, you automatically go into aftercare if you're not picked up by 3.30. Okay, so <clears throat> what, was, what was supposed to be the plan? What did you think was gonna happen that day? Uh, Jen was picking him up. Okay, and was that another one of the things that she normally did, pick up yeah. Oliver? Yes. Okay. And she was supposed to pick him up that day? Yes. Did Oliver have any appointments after school, after Jennifer picked him up? Was there supposed to be something they were gonna go do? Yes, on Wednesdays he, he had uh, athletic training at four o'clock. And where did that training take place? It was at the, in the front of my house. Okay. And so was the plan that Jennifer would pick him up, take him home, and he would be there with his athletic trainer? Yes. I'll sustain the objection of the form. Okay. Tell us what the plan was. She would pick him up at school. They would get a bite to eat and, um, and then uh, come home, and he would do the training at four. Okay. And... Was it out of the ordinary for Jennifer to not pick up your kids when she was scheduled to do so? Yes. Had that ever happened before? Never. In almost seven years that she had been taking care of your kids? <clears throat> Never happened. Did you attempt to contact Jennifer when you learned that she hadn't picked up Oliver? Yes. And how, what methods did you use to try to contact her? I first called and it went straight to voicemail, which never happened either before. Okay. Any other methods? Did you try anything else? I, te I text also. Okay. So did she ever answer her phone? No. Did no. she ever respond to the text messages that you sent? No. So did you go to the school and pick up Oliver? Yes. And did you and Oliver eventually make your way back home to your house in Winter Park? Yes. Was Oliver's trainer there when you got home? Yes. Was Jennifer there? No. Was her car there? No. Did you look around your house for her? Um, at first, at, at first I, I, let, I let Oliver go outside to the trainer and the trainer asked me where Jen was because he... I'll overrule the objection to that question. Let's just kind of, uh, uh, we can kind of, the, Jennifer, had the trainer, to your knowledge, had the trainer heard from Jennifer? No. Okay. And so did you get Oliver set up with his trainer and get that all going? Yes. Did you then go back into the house? Yes. When you went back in the house, did you start looking for Jennifer? Yes. Did you look all around your house? Yes. Did you find her? No. Did you find any personal effects of hers in your house? Our, her, uh, handbag was in, the, in the, the powder room downstairs. In the bathroom? The bathroom. And by her handbag, you mean her purse? Purse. Did you look through her purse? Uh, yes. And in her purse, tell us some of the stuff you saw in her purse. <clears throat> I saw receipts um, that she saved for spending, she did, and... Um... Let, me, let me stop you there. Did, did you and she <clears throat> have a joint bank account? Yes. Now, by joint bank account, did she ever contribute money to it, or what was it used for? Uh, household spending. Okay. I, I would deposit money, and she would use it for... Okay. So this was not an account that she contributed money to. This was an account that you had set up that she had access to in order to work for you. Yes. And did she keep the receipts and periodically give them to you for bookkeeping purposes? Yes. 
Inside her purse, did you find a pile of receipts that you recognized as similar to piles she's given to you in the past? Yes. Did you also find the credit card associated with that account? Yes. Did you find anything else of Jennifer's in the house? No. How about her cell phone? Did you ever see her cell phone in her purse or in your house? I did not. Did it seem like Jennifer had done the work that she would normally do at your house on a work day? Uh, the kitchen was cl cleaned, but nothing else was done in the house. And, and what other sorts of things would she normally have done? She would have made all the beds upstairs. Um, there was a pile of towels downstairs, and um, the place would have been spotless. So she normally would have done the laundry with the towels? Yes. She normally would have made the beds? Yes. Now you say the kitchen was cleaned. Why is it that you took notice of how clean the kitchen was? Because the night before I, I cooked dinner for my sister for her birthday and um, we had people over and it was, it was left a mess. So it, was it apparent to you that she had had some time to do some work in your house that day? Yes. Did you see a FedEx package that had been delivered to your house that day? Yes. And what was in the FedEx package? Um, it was the bacon of the month club I was a member of. And okay. I got, I received my bacon. You received your bacon that day, all right. Where was that FedEx package located when you saw it? It was, it was inside the house. Do you know it was, where it was? It was right next to the front door. Right next to the front door. Yes? Yes. Okay. Was that something that would have needed to be refrigerated? Yes. And would Jennifer, has, you know, having worked for you for that long, is that something that she would have opened the package and known to put it in the refrigerator because it's bacon? Yes. Okay. But that package was sitting by the front door? Yes. Now, after you got home and you kind of saw the, the state of your house, um, what did you do when you couldn't find Jennifer and you couldn't reach her? Um, I tried to call Robert, her husband. Okay. Um, I could not find a cell phone number, um, and so I called him at his office. And it was at, by this time, it was after five, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> it went to voicemail. Okay. And and then I, I, um, I called uh, the two local hospitals. Why'd you do that? Because this was so highly unusual that she was missing or had not called me. And she had never, no, nothing like that had ever been done before. Were you concerned that maybe something had happened to her, yes. like a car accident or something like that? Yes. Okay. So obviously you had no luck finding her at any of the hospitals, correct? Correct. All right. So ultimately, did you call the Winter Park Police Department to report her missing? Yes. I'll overrule the objection. Did you call the Winter Park Police Department to report yes. her missing? Yes. Okay. And you did, in fact, report her missing? Yes. Did law enforcement respond to your house that night? They did. Did you allow them to search your home? Yes, I did. And did you allow them the next day to come in? Did you give them consent to search your house, take photographs, remove evidence if they wanted to, things like that? Yes. Did you give law enforcement consent to search your electronics, like your cell phone and your computers? Yes. And they, in fact, did that? Yes. Did you participate in multiple interviews with law enforcement concerning Jennifer, both during the time that she was missing and after her body was located? Yes. On the night of September 27th, did Robert Fulford come to your house? Yes. And without telling us exactly what was said, did the two of you discuss the fact that Jennifer was missing? Yes. Initially on the day Jennifer went missing, did you immediately, when you got home after getting Oliver set up with his trainer and going in, did you immediately notice if there was anything of significance missing from your house? Initially? Yes. No. Okay. 
Did you ultimately realize that there was a bedspread or a duvet with a duvet cover missing from your king size bed in your master bedroom? Yes. Okay. Now both the duvet cover and the duvet inside were missing? Yes. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. I'm going to show you what has previously been marked for identification as State's Exhibit <clears throat> K. Again, without showing the jury, if you could take a look at that. Do you recognize that room? Yes. Okay. And is that your master bedroom in your house? Yes, it is. And does that fairly and accurately look, uh, represent what it looked like on September 27th and September 28th of 2017? Yes. Judge, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification as state's exhibit K in evidence. Okay. Without objection, what's been marked for identification as state's K is admitted in evidence as state's exhibit 4. Now, law enforcement, they didn't take any pictures of your house on the night of September 27th, correct? Okay. I'll did, sustain the objection of the form. Did law enforcement take any pictures of your house on the night of September 27th? I don't believe so. Okay. If this picture was taken on September 28th of 2017, is, it still, is that still what your room looked like on the night of the 27th, however? Yes. Okay. And is this your master bedroom? Yes, it is. And is that your master bed? Yes. And is that a king-size bed? Yes. And would there normally be a duvet cover or some sort of bedspread that would be on that bed? Yes. And was that duvet cover or that bedspread on your bed when you got home on the night of September 27th? It was not. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as State's Exhibit A, D. You can take a look at that. <coughs> Do you recognize the item in that photograph? Yes. And do you recognize, what do you recognize it to be? It's the duvet cover. Okay. Does that match the duvet cover that used to be on your bed in your master bedroom in that picture we just saw? Yes, it does. Judge, at this time, the state would remove what has previously been marked for identification as state's exhibit A, D into evidence? No, okay, no. Without objection, what's been marked for identification as state's A, D is admitted into evidence as state's exhibit 5. Sir, what's now been entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 5. I realize it looks a little crumpled up, but do you recognize that as your duvet cover? Yes, I do. Sir, do you have valuable items in your home? Uh, yes. And I'll, I'll, you know, we don't have to talk specifically, but valuable, I'll call them tangible items, things that could be taken, pawned, sold for money, things like that? Yes. Okay. Do you have a watch collection? Yes. On September 27th, was there anything of real value taken from your home? Anything tangible that could have been sold? No. And was your watch collection still there? Yes. Okay. Sir, I just have one last question. Do you know the defendant? No. Prior to September 27th of 2017, had you ever seen him before in your life? No. Thank you. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. <clears throat> now, Ms. Uh, Fulford would be... Um, Charged with doing a number of things at your house, was she not? Excuse me. She would. Your Miss Fulford would be in charge of doing a number of things at your yes. house. Yes. And you would tell her what she wanted done. Correct. And she would agree to. Do, she would agree to do them, or at least accomplish them. Yes. And there would be times where you would bring people or have people come over to the house to do certain things. Correct. Um, one of them might be for the lawn. You had a lawn service, and she would take care of that and make sure everything was done correctly? Yes. And if need be, if they needed to get in the house, she would be the one to be able to let them in? Could you repeat that? Yeah. 
if if they needed to come to the house for, for you know such as restroom breaks or anything like that, she would be the one that would allow them to come in. Yes. Okay. Um, and you um, also had a pool, and you had people servicing your pool. Yes. And she would be the one to have them come in and uh, make sure that the things were taken care of. The pool service. Yeah. They would just go. She didn't have to be there for the pool service. Okay. Um, and Flamingo Freeman, you mentioned a few moments ago, they would come into your house to bring the artwork and put it up? Yes. And so she would be the one to let them in? Yes. Um, so if, uh, now at one point you had cameras in your house, did you not? I had cameras not in the house, they were outside of the house. Outside of the house, okay. And those were not working at that time, were they? Uh, no. Now, you also had a security system in the house? Yes. And it doesn't tell you who came in and came out. It just tells you that the door is open? Correct. No further questions, Your Honor. Redirect. If Jennifer had people come to the house to do work, you would have been the one to pay for it, though, correct? Yes. And she would have told you who was coming and how they were paid? Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. All right, sir, you can step down. Thank you. Ms. Hicks, please call the next witness for the state. Your Honor, the state calls Officer Rick Thomas. Ms. Burdick. Testimony here about the give of the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help the God. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Reporter. Rick Thomas, R I C K T H O M A S. Thank you. Ms. Burdick. <coughs> Good morning. Please tell the members of the jury your occupation. I work for the city of Winter Park as a police officer. How long have you been employed by the city of Winter Park? Approximately 11 and a half years. Okay. Uh, you said your duties with them are patrol? Yes, ma'am. What would that encompass? What sort of uh, job do you do from a, on a day-to-day -day basis? Respond to calls, um, help with citizens, traffic. Uh, you would be, I'm sorry to interrupt. Reports. All right. So you would be the individual... Uh, or one of the individuals who would respond to, say, a 911 call? Yes, ma'am. Or a non-emergency call for service? Yes. All right, driving around Winter Park uh, in a patrol vehicle? Yes. And dressed as you are today in full uniform? Yes. Right. Did, the winter, did you respond to 175 East Webster in the city of Winter Park on September 27th of 2017? Yes. Did that call come into the Winter Park Police Department at approximately 6.25 p.m. that day? Yes. I'll overrule the objection. Do you know? Yes. All right. Is that time accurate? It's approximately, yes. 6.20, about 6.30 in the evening? Correct. Okay. Um, were you the initial individual to respond? No. All right. Were you the second person to respond? Yes. Is there a reason why you responded after uh, a, an initial officer appeared? I started, I started work at um, 6.45 p.m. So it was during shift change. So right after read off, I went and relieved the daytime officer that initially responded. All right, so if I'm clear, a, a person whose shift would have ended at 6.45 responded first? Their shift, day shift ends at 7 okay. p.m. So. so there's a few minutes of overlap. Yes. All right. So once you responded to that address, um, did you make contact with anyone there? Yes, I did. Who would that have been? Officer, Officer Easterbrook. All right. Did you make uh, contact also with the homeowner? Yes, I did. 
Was that Mr. Reed Berman? Yes. You look around the house? I walked, no, I didn't look around the house. I walked straight in to the kitchen, right. and that was it. Um, did you or were you uh, pointed to any particular items in the kitchen? There was a purse on the center um, island in the kitchen. All right. Did you, look at, did you look at the purse? I looked at it, yes. All right. Did you look in it at all? No. At that time, did you take possession of it? No. Aside from coming in and looking around um, or going into the kitchen and looking around, what else did you do that evening? I, I went over, I, I got the sworn statement from Mr. Berman. By that you mean you had Mr. Berman write out yes. a statement about obtained a license plate? Yes. Through the system? Yes. All right. Uh, did you do an area check? I did. Right. What did that encompass? I went to areas um, that she may have been at. I obtained information from uh, Mr. Berman, and I eventually spoke to her husband, Mr. Falford, that gave me information where she may have been that day. So I went and checked and just Excuse me, just try to find her uh, vehicle, see if it was parked somewhere. All right. Uh, would one of those locations have been a dentist's office? Yes. Right. And at that time of day, was the office closed? That's correct. Were you able to locate the vehicle that you had found uh, through the Florida database at that dental office? I did not. Uh, you said that you had spoken to um, Mr. Fulford. Yes. Jennifer Fulford's husband. Yes. All right. Was that in person or over the phone, at least initially? Initially, it was over the phone. All right. Um, did you learn from him uh, whether or not there were ATM transactions that had taken place? I did. Did you know where the uh, ATM was located that was discussed? Yes. Okay. I'll sustain the objection to the truth of the matter asserted, but overrule it to the extent it may have affected the listener. All right. Did you know where the ATM was located? Yes. Did you uh, go by the ATM to determine whether or not the vehicle was in that area? Yes. Did you find it? No. At some point in time, did you return to um, Mr. Berman's residence on East Webster to retrieve the purse that you had seen earlier on the uh, kitchen counter? Yes. And did you take possession of it? Initially, not the first time I went there. All right. No. All right. The first time you went there was approximately what time? Or correction, the second time I went back, when I went back the first time after right. I left, um, I believe around 11 p.m. All right. And at 11 p.m., you went to retrieve the purse and were not able to obtain it? That's correct. All right. Did you leave again? Yes. And uh, were you called back? Yes. How long afterwards? Uh, approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Were you able to take possession of the purse at that time? Yes. What did you do with that item once you took possession of it? I then looked through it, and it, as soon as I got done looking through it, see if there was anything in there um, of a value, I went directly to our police department to submit it into property evidence for okay. uh, safekeeping. All right. Uh, were you able to determine whether or not there was a cell phone in the purse? No. There was not a cell phone, or you weren't able to determine? There was no cell phone. All right. Was there a wallet that you saw in the purse? I don't recall. Okay. Did you respond uh, in that evening to the Fulford residence in Altamont Springs? I did. All right. 
Uh, did you learn that Jennifer Fulford uh, was scheduled to take a trip to Dallas, Texas? I'll sustain the objection as to the truth of the matter, sir, but overruled to the extent it may have had an effect on listening. Yes. All right. Um, were you allowed into the Fulford residence? I was. Right. Did you um, ascertain whether or not um, Ms. Fulford had packed, or did it appear uh, from your observation uh, that she had packed for a trip the next day to Dallas? I'll sustain the objection to the form of the question. From your observations, were you able to determine whether or not it appeared that there was a packed bag for a trip? Yes. There was a packed bag? No, there was not a packed bag. All right. Now, the car that you referenced earlier, the Hyundai SUV, um, were you able to determine whether or not that car could be located through a uh, GPS system? Yes. All right. Uh, were you able to access any of that information that evening? I was not. Right. Did you uh, direct Mr. Fulford to take any action in that regard? Yes, I did. What did you do? He needed to go down to a Hyundai dealership to something with the information they needed to permission because it was something with, because it was a used car, it was something with the information, it wasn't registered into their name, mm -hmm. so they had to go. So it was, it was something that could not be accomplished that evening? That's correct. All right. Did you uh, enter Ms. Fulford, Jennifer Fulford, into the uh, system as a missing or endangered adult? And was that done at 11 o'clock that evening on September 27th of 2017? Yes. I have no other questions of the witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination. When you arrived at the Berman residence, um, you were made aware that she was missing. Am I correct in that? Yes. And so at that point, you have no idea whether the person left voluntarily or involuntar involuntarily, right? That's correct. So when you first got there, you saw that there was a purse on the counter. Yes. And um, your understanding was that purse belonged to Ms. Fulford. That's what I was told. Now, when you arrive at a scene um, where you're not sure, one of the things that you want to do is preserve evidence. Am I correct? That's if I suspect a crime. Okay. So you didn't look in the purse at that point, right? No. So wallet's missing, phone's missing. That may be indications of a crime, wouldn't it? No, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily, but possibly, right? Possible, yes. Right. Because at that point, you still don't know whether it's voluntary or involuntary that the person left, right? That's correct. So um, so that wasn't done. So when you're... you're um, Talking with Mr. Berman, I suspect that you would have asked him all the people that might have been at that location that day that might have information on, on her, right? I didn't, no. Okay. Um, now, Mr. Easterbrook, or Officer Easterbrook, was there earlier? Yes. Did he pass notes on to you? Yes. And in those notes, did it indicate anything about other people that might have been at the house that day? No. Okay. Um, so... At that point, did you give instructions to Mr. Berman, because you don't know whether it's involuntary or voluntary leaving, to make sure not to mess with the purse too much in case you need to come back and take it? I'm sorry. I'll slow down. Okay. When you were at the location with Mr. Berman and you were there with the purse, did you tell Mr. Berman to not do anything with the purse because at that point, you had no idea whether it was a voluntary or involuntary leaving by Ms. Fulford. I don't recall the exact. Okay. And preservation of evidence is important in cases, is it not? Preservation of evidence is important in a case, right? Yes. And you don't want too many different DNAs on a purse if you can help it, right? That's correct. And you want to preserve it as... as uh, close as possible to the way it was when you found it, right? That's correct.
Now, at that point, there was no evidence uh, that you were aware of that was a forced entry or a violent struggle, right? That's correct. But there, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that that did not occur, right? Yes. No further questions. Redirect. No redirect. All right, officer, you can step down. <laughs> All right, Ms. Burdick, please call the next witness for the state. Or Ms. Hicks, please call the next witness Not for the state. state. Sorry. It, the state calls Robert Fulford. Thank you. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Corporal. Robert Fulford, R-O-B-E-R-T-F-U-L-F-O-R-D. Thank you. Ms. Hicks. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you please tell us what your relationship was to Jennifer Fulford? She was my wife. How long had you been married? Seven years. And this might be hard a little bit. If you need to take a break, just let us know. Sure. But we do need to make sure that you can answer the questions loud enough for everybody to hear, okay? Uh, seven years. Okay. In September of 2017, where were you guys living? Uh, in Altamont Springs on Sassafras Avenue. Were you employed at that time? Yes. Where were you employed? Uh, Freeman. What is that? It is a trade show company. Okay. And what did you do for that company? A uh, production manager for the graphics department. Were you scheduled to work on September 27th of 2017? Yes. What time did you have to be at work that day? Uh, 7 a.m. And so what time did you and Jennifer get up that morning? She got up a little bit before me. I got up at 5.30. Who left the house first? She left first. Do you know about what time she left? Uh, around 6. Anything out of the ordinary with her when she left that day? No. No. Sir, did you ever see her again after she left your house that morning? I did not. Did you ever hear from her during the day on September 27th? Uh, no, I did not. No phone calls, text messages, anything like that? Uh, no. Was that unusual for the two of you to kind of not communicate during the day? Uh, no, not usually. We were usually both very busy. Okay. So it didn't give you any cause for concern that you didn't hear from her throughout the day? No. And did you go to work? Yes. And what time did you work until that evening? Uh, until about 5 p.m. And when you left work, where did you go? I went to uh, uh, a nearby shoe store. I was trying to buy, buy some inserts for a pair of work boots. Okay, and were you able to get what you were looking for at the shoe store? Uh, no, no, so I headed home and I stopped at the CVS and bought some that they had there. Okay, so you left work, you went to the shoe store, you went to CVS, and then did you ultimately make your way home? Yes. Now, when you got home, do you know about what time it was? Uh, after 6, sometime between 6, 6.30. And what did you do when you got home? I uh, turned on the TV, uh, wanted to watch a program that I liked that Jenny didn't like. What show was that? Uh, the Walking Dead. Okay. Now, were you ex what time were you expecting Jennifer to get home? Uh, she'd usually come home on uh, whenever she took care of Oliver. She would usually come home about 6.30. Or, or seven some nights, it, it depended on how late she had to stay. Okay. It, usually she just stayed until Reed came home. Okay. So um, when was the, how, what was the first thing that kind of uh, gave you some inkling, or, or how did you learn that something might be wrong with Jennifer? Uh, well, the Altamont Springs Police Department came and knocked on the door. And what happened when they arrived? Uh, initially, there was a little bit of confusion. They knocked on the door. They asked me if my name was Reed Berman, and I said no. And, and then they said, well, what is your name? I told them my name was Robert Fulford, and they said, you're the husband of Jennifer Fulford, correct? And I said yes, and then they said, told me that 
Reed Berman had reported her missing. Okay. What did you do upon learning that information that your wife might be missing? Uh, I tried to call her. Okay. Any luck ca contacting her? No. Okay. And how, about how long were the law enforcement officers at your house, the ones that first came from the Altamont Springs Police Department? Uh, 30 minutes. And after they left, were they able to give you very much information about what was going on? No. So after they left, what did you do? Uh, I uh, called her friends, I called her family, and tried to see if anybody had heard from her. Okay. Tell us some of the people that you called. I called uh, uh, her sisters, uh, I called uh, uh, her children, Austin, Hannah. So you were not Jennifer's first husband, correct? No. And she had children prior to you yes. guys getting together? Yes. How many kids did she have? Two. Where did they live? In uh, Austin and uh, Denton, Texas. Okay, so do both kids live in Texas? Yes. And they're adults? Yes. Do they have children of their own? Uh, Austin, at the time, uh, had one and was expecting one. When was his second baby born? That same day. Austin's child was born on September 27th, 2017? Yes. And when you talked to Austin, had he heard from his mom after his baby was born? No. Sustain the objection to the truth of the matter, sir. Overrule it to the extent it may have an effect on the listener. So all the friends and family that you talked to, had anybody heard from Jennifer since early that morning? Nobody had. Okay. Now, Jennifer had a cell phone, though, correct? Yes. What was Jennifer's cell phone number at that time? Uh, 407. 3040401, I believe. Okay. And what was your cell phone number at the time? 407 725 2486. 2436? 2486. 2486, thank you. All right. So after making efforts, calling multiple people to try to locate her, trying to call her, um, did you do anything else to? assist in the investigation? Uh, I, I went on to the Wells Fargo account and I checked to see if um, any money had been withdrawn. Okay. So how many bank accounts did you and Jennifer share in common? We only shared uh, our checking and savings. Okay. And was that through Wells Fargo? Yes. And you had access to that account? Yes. And Jennifer had access to that account? Yes. Did she have an ATM card related to that account? And um, was there a daily limit on the amount of cash that could be taken from the ATM? Yes. What was that daily limit? I think it's $310. Okay. And did you take any money out of the account that day? No. And upon looking at your bank account online, what did you see? I saw a withdrawal for $300. Okay, and had you done that? No. And had Jennifer told you that she had any intention of yeah, taking? No, I'm going to overrule the objection because I don't think the question was finished. But after the question is finished, if you have an objection, you can make it. Did you have any reason to believe Jennifer was going to take a large sum of money from the bank account that day? Yes, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Jennifer was planning on going to Texas the next day, correct? Okay. Correct. I'll sustain the objection to the form. Was Jennifer planning on going to Texas the next day? Yes. Okay. And when you checked the bank account, you saw that $300 had been taken out. Yes. Did you provide that information to law enforcement? Okay. And at some point, you were shown photographs, still shots from an ATM camera. Is that correct? That is correct. And did you recognize the person in the photos of the ATM? No. And was it your wife? No. What kind of car did Jennifer drive? It was a, a Hyundai Santa Fe. Okay. And how long had she had that car? Uh, less than a year. Can you describe the car for us? Um, it was uh, kind of um, a metallic, uh, I don't know, champagne color, brown. Okay. Metallic brown. Was it uh, like a car, an SUV, a truck? What was it? SUV. The four Did it door have SUV. like a? I'm sorry. Four door SUV. 
and did it have like a back area like a lot of SUVs yes. do? Yeah. How would you access that? Uh, from uh, from the back, I mean, just lift it at the tailgate. It had a tailgate that lifted up? Yes. Okay. Now, did that vehicle have any sort of active tracking device like OnStar or something like that on September 27th? Uh, yes, but it was not active. She didn't want it. Um, she didn't want to pay for the service. Okay, so it had an inactive tracking system. Right. Did you do, did you make any efforts the night of the 27th to try to activate that tracking system? Yes. What efforts did you make to try to activate it? Uh, I called Hyundai and the, their Blue Link support line and uh, talked to uh, a guy there who was going to activate it for me, but ultimately we could not do it because uh, it was a used car and the Blue Link was still registered under the previous owner. So the best he could do for me was delete all the information associated with that device uh, so that I could re-register it in the morning. Okay, and so the following morning on the 28th, did you go to a car dealership in order to do that? Yes. Okay, and so you activated the tracking device on her car? I did. And did you give law enforcement the permission to sort of be the contact person to, if, if the car could be tracked, they would contact law enforcement as opposed to you? Yes. All right. Did you go to Reed Berman's house on the night of the 27th to talk to him about Jennifer's disappearance? I did. Okay. Did you sit for several interviews with law enforcement in an effort to assist in the investigation? Yes. Okay. Sir, do you know the defendant? No. Prior to September 27th of 2017, had you ever seen him before in your life? No. Was he someone that you and your wife socialized with? No. Do you, you didn't know him at all? I did not know him at all. Thank you. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. Cross Sir, you can sit down. Ms. Hicks, please call the next witness for the state. Ms. Burdick, please call the next witness for the state. Thank you. Please call me for the testimony. Here about the give will be the truth, the whole truth. Nothing but the truth to help you, God. Yes, Ma'am, please state your first state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Report. Sharon Wagoner. First name is S H A R O N W A G G A N E R. Thank you. Ms. Burke. Good morning. Good morning. Please tell the, member the members of the jury how you are employed. I am a detective with the Winter Park Police Department, and I've been with the agency since September of 1999. Do you have a uh, particular assignment as a detective, or does Winter Park have a, a general assignment? We have general assignment. We work everything from major cases to petty thefts on a daily basis. So you were employed as a uh, general assignment detective with Winter Park back on September 27th, 28th of 2017? Yes, I was. Great. Were you involved at all into the investigation into uh, Jennifer Fulford's disappearance on the evening of September 27th? No, ma'am, I was not. Right. Is that unusual? No. All right. Uh, would it be typical for patrol uh, officers uh, to do a preliminary investigation and then uh, notify supervisors who, who make decisions about whether or not the detective bureau would be involved? Yes, that's exactly the process. All right, if they deem a detective's needed, they will contact the supervisor and then call us out to respond either sometimes immediately, sometimes later on. In this case, uh, when did the Detective Bureau become involved into the investigation into uh, Jennifer Fulford's disappearance? The uh, September 28th, the day after 
she was reported missing. Right. Uh, would that have occurred first thing in the morning? Yes, ma'am, it did. All right. When you were uh, assigned, what is the first thing you did? I went to the home where she was last seen, um, 175 East Webster Avenue in Winter Park, where the homeowner had reported her uh, missing from. All right. And you're speaking about Mr. Berman's residence? Yes, I am. All right. Was Mr. Berman present when you arrived? Yes, we met with him in person. All right. What was the approximate time that you met with him in person? It was about 10 a.m. that morning. All right. And did you go there alone? I went with another detective, Detective Foster. All right. Did you ultimately uh, request the assistance of a uh, crime scene investigator to document what the Berman residence, uh, the interior, interior and exterior of the Berman residence looked like on the morning of September 28th of 2017? Yes, we did. I believe it was maybe about a half hour or so after that that they arrived. All right. Did uh, Mr. Berman allow you and the other detective into his residence? He did. He was very cooperative. He didn't require us to get... I'll sustain the objection. All right. He allowed you in. Uh, did he give you consent to search whatever parts of the home you felt were appropriate? Yes, he did. All right. And did you do that? Yes, we did. All right. And did you conduct a walkthrough of the entire residence? Yes, ma'am. All right. When you were there, uh, did you take note as to whether or not there was a FedEx package, a Federal Express package present? Yes, there was a package on the table in the kitchen area of the home. And he explained what the delivery was. Sustain the objection. All right. You observed the package there, however, inside the residence? Yes, I did. Did you uh, look around to determine whether or not there were any obvious signs of forced entry? Of course. We looked for that and did not note any. Right. No broken windows, uh, no uh, even open windows anywhere, um, locks busted, anything like that no. on the exterior of the home? Nothing. All right. Um, from what you were able to observe, was there any obvious sign of theft? No. Okay. If I may approach the witness, Your Honor, I've shown all of these to counsel. Some of them are already in evidence. States two in evidence. Go ahead. States F as in Frank for identification, G, H, I, J, K, all those for identification, and then four in evidence. You can take a look at these photographs and after reviewing them, let me, let me know if they Fairly and accurately depict the condition of Mr. Reed's residence when you were there uh, with the crime scene investigator on September 28th of Observe that day. Your Honor, I would seek to introduce the reference letter and exhibits for identification into evidence. Uh, no objection. All right, so without objection, uh, what the state has marked for identification will all be admitted into evidence. They'll be numbered sequentially in the uh, manner determined by the clerk. That's starting with exhibit five, correct? Six? Okay. Starting with Exhibit 6. F will be number 6. Exhibit 
G number seven. H eight. I nine. J ten. L eleven. <clears throat> Permission to publish these journals. Right. All right. We've seen two in evidence already. This is the home where you went with the uh, other detective to speak with Mr. Berman? Yes. When you uh, gained entry, was it through this door? Yes, it was. Right. What part of the house is this? That is the front living room. Is this the, uh, obviously, the inside, inside the home. part of the front door? Showing you seven in evidence. What are we looking at here? The front door is to the right of this picture, and this is the living room that you first walk into when you enter the home. All right. Front door over here. What is this area here to the on the left side of the photo? That is the hallway that leads to a downstairs bathroom. Showing you eight in evidence. Zoom out a little bit. What are we looking at here? This is the same hallway. This is a metal door stop on the floor in that hallway. I have a laser and pointer if you can I point it at this? Or? Yeah, okay. Point it at that screen. This is a uh, door stop that screws into the floor of the downstairs hallway. This is the bathroom of the downstairs bathroom. Showing you nine in evidence. Is that a close up of what you call the door stop? Yes, it is. And uh, was that the condition it was in when you arrived there on the 28th? No. When I arrived, it was together and it was pieced together. It was still broken. Mr. Berman. Okay, I'm going to hear say. Your Honor. Stop. I'm going to sustain the objection. You can lay a foundation so I can maybe understand the objection or we need to approach it. Did Mr. Berman do something to that uh, before this picture was taken? Yes. Yeah. It's an action she was Okay, hold it. I'm going to sustain the objection because I'm not hearing what you just said. It's testimony of counsel, but you can ask the witness. Did you see Mr. Berman do something to that? Door stop. Yes, I did. What did you see? I saw him take it apart and place it in that situation. Showing you 10. Is this the um, bathroom that you had referenced? being at the end of the hall that's shown in eight in evidence. Yes, it is. And this is the uh, condition in which the bathroom uh, appeared yes. when you were there on September 28th. Yes, Showing you four in evidence. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. And what is that? The master bedroom. Bed. And is this the uh, condition in which it appeared on the uh, 28th? Yes. And finally, 11 in evidence. What is this? That is the backyard of the home. Including a swimming pool? Swimming pool. And a pool house.
Now, as part of the uh, investigation, did you attempt to uh, determine if Reed Berman was where he said he was during the day and evening of September 27th? Yes, we did. Okay. And were you able to confirm that he had, in fact, gone to uh, a variety of meetings? I'll sustain the objection as to the truth of the matter asserted. I'll overrule it as to the effect it may have had on the listener. Were you able to do that? Yes, we were. Would you also have um, attempted to determine whether or not Mr. Fulford had been where he said he was? Yes. And were you able to do that? Yes, I was. And the objection is to the truth of the matter, sir, and overrule it to the effect, to the extent it may have had an effect on the listener. Now, had you learned that uh, Jennifer Fulford had been to the dentist? Yes, we did learn that. Right. Did you go to the dental office? I did not go to it, but we did have another detective. I'll sustain that objection. Was another detective that was assisting you in the investigation charged with the responsibility of going to the dental office to confirm whether or not she made the appointment uh, that was scheduled? Yes, they were. Where, when you were at the Berman home, uh, did you notice whether or not it had an alarm system? The home did have an alarm system. Did you uh, notice whether or not there were interior cameras? There were cameras on the property. Um, exterior, can't recall if, I don't believe there were interior. Okay. Did you then make contact with the uh, alarm company in an effort to determine uh, what information could be gleaned as to the uh, access of individuals on September 27th of 2017. Yes, Mr. Berman actually went over the information that he obtained from it and then we contacted alarm.com to get certified records of that information. And since you saw the uh, FedEx package on the, uh, in the kitchen, yes. Uh, did you make an attempt to determine when that package was delivered? Yes, we did. All right. Your Honor, at this point, I have no other questions of the witness. Cross-examination. <coughs> Pardon? No question. Oh, okay. Did that mean you step down? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we're going to take our lunch recess. During the lunch recess, you are going to continue to leave your notepads and your pens on your seats. During the lunch recess, you remain under all the court's instructions, including but not limited to the instruction not to discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Um, we'll plan to continue the presentation of the evidence at 1.30 p.m. this afternoon, so please follow the deputy's instructions to be back here so we can bring you in at 1.30 p.m. to continue the presentation of the evidence. Thank you for your service here this morning. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you at 1.30 p.m. this afternoon. Good counsel, please approach. All right, we'll be in lunch recess till 1.30 p.m. this afternoon. You all have a good lunch.